The clarifications pertain to a number of aspects of our program. Uh, we've had at least one customer share with us that they felt that our equipment sizing information and formula was ambiguous. So we've made very clear in our program the types of equipment that we'll allow in our system and also how we use our EPA-based formula to calculate size. Uh, that formula was approved by the EPA for use in our program back in 2004. Uh, and it takes into account the amount and the type of food, an amount, uh, the number of plumbing fixtures that discharge to that equipment, and we understand that there are times when restaurants don't have the physical space to actually add a thousand gallon external interceptor outside their building. And in those cases, we've allowed them to install smaller equipment and clean it and pump it more frequently. In the revised program, we've made those exceptions clear. And we've also added information that makes the installation requirements clear, prohibited discharges, prohibited connections, and if a facility decides to uh, remodel or add addition equi uh, kitchen equipment or seating, uh, they need to contact us. We've made it clear they need to discuss with us because their, sufficient, their equipment that they have may not be sufficient for grease control. Probably most importantly, we've made very clear the certification of equipment. Uh, that has to be done once every two years. Through our inspections and our certifications, we've seen a number of internal traps that are failing. Uh, many of those were installed in 2002 and prior to when our program actually came uh, into uh, being implemented. And those, uh, those traps that are eight to 10 years old are going to have to continue to be replaced by customers with equipment that meets our current sizing requirements. In fact, I think that is one reason why we're seeing now uh, either um, a lack of a reduction in grease-related SSOs or actually an increase uh, in grease problems in our system. I, uh, I think the program that's revised as it is now, it does a better job of stressing adequately sized equipment that's installed properly. Uh, it also stresses maintenance of equipment, uh, the maintenance schedules, and documentation of that maintenance. It outlines some of the outcomes of our inspections. If we show up and there's grease and solids in their equipment above an acceptable level, we will ask them, as we always have, to either pump more uh, or more often, or they may be required to contract with a waste hauler so that we can be sure that the 10 months that we're not there, that they are actually cleaning that equipment as it should be. And if that doesn't work, they may be required to actually step up in equipment size and go again to an external interceptor, which again is the best way to control and, and capture grease at any food service facility. And then finally, um, for facilities that don't comply, that don't take uh, corrective action seriously, we've brought some information into our program that's listed elsewhere in our rules and regulations that says that uh, KUB has the authority for any permitted user, and all of our food service facilities are, they are permitted, that they must comply with the requirements of this program or uh, there'll be consequences for that. So in conclusion, Rel Rel Resolution 1280, uh, if approved today, it adopts the revised wastewater rules and regulations with the changes that I've described for you. It authorizes our president and CEO to take the actions necessary to implement these changes and it would be effective upon your passage. And I'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, I have a question. Um, so we inspect once a year? It depends. Uh, we annually inspect if a facility is out of compliance, we always follow up. Uh, we do a follow-up inspection to make sure. 
and if they are high risk, you all may have remembered me saying this in the past, we will go to that facility more than once a year, sometimes on a semi-annual basis, sometimes on a quarterly basis. So are we amending this because something came down or we're amending it just to be part of this? We are, we, it's needed to be amended. I think we're trying to make our program requirements clear so that food service facilities know that if they have to upgrade equipment, that it's very important to do so. Again, we had a number of traps that were in place prior to our program's implementation and, and they're just uh, basically falling apart in some cases. I assume that we're also amending on this uh, categorical because that is a new requirement on us. Is that a um, Tennessee only, is that only coming from TDIC or is that, a, is that EPA and that's going to be a national? It's a federal regulation. Okay. And it actually passes down into the state rules and then on to us. So the, the stuff that we put out, our system still can't quite clean it, but because it's so small and amount, does it matter? So. It depends. Uh, sometimes uh, it can be necessary to reduce certain substances or contaminants down to very low levels, and we can't do that. Mm -hmm. It can be because they're toxic. Um, it, it, it just depends on the particular contaminant. Uh, the real reason for categorical was because it's difficult for most wastewater treatment plants to remove or break right, down. We've got this exception for under 100,000 gallons a day. Is it just because of the small amount? Yes, yes. So. Uh, it's 100,000 or other It's 100,000. Okay. <coughs> That's a very low flood for that. One other thing. The inspections, the second <coughs> inspection, is that a surprise inspection or do they know when come? Well, they're all surprise inspections. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, but when we go into a facility and there's a problem, uh, we will tell them we'll be back <coughs> within a, a specified period. We give them so long to correct the problem. For instance, if they haven't uh, cleaned or pumped the trap, we give them five days. If they have to upgrade uh, a trap, or repair something, we'll give them anywhere from 60 days. And, and in a lot of cases where we are asking customers to upgrade old equipment, mm -hmm. we work with them on schedule. Uh, there are times when the, that kind of uh, uh, an installation hits their budget pretty hard. So we yeah. give them six months to plan and prepare for that. My question is more about the communication. You know, the customers even have been here surprised by their requirements do or whatever. Do you feel like we're making strides so that you know, the customers are more aware and they're not going to be surprised whether it's a, a new installation or some other budget? Are we doing better? I think we are. I think this program will help us in that regard. Food service facilities always get a copy of our grease control program. Um, it is available to them on the web. I think it, it has been somewhat um, streamlined so that when they read it now, the most important things are apparent in that program. So we try hard uh, to communicate with them. We do have a lot of turnover in some existing facilities where when we gave it to the manager or the previous owner, when we go back the next month even, sometimes it's a different individual. Uh, but training is also a component when they sign on their permit that they will train employees and pass information along. So we're trying hard and I think this will help us. The other thing I was going to ask, there was a strange article recently about grease and cooking oil being stolen on yes, the back uh, end. And, you know, I thought that might be a good thing. That's something. <laughs> 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 is it really a market for the grease? But there's companies that are harvesting, if you will, the grease and the cooking oil and taking it to be reused, which is a good thing, except for the ones that are so on. What about, and I know we're not talking about it right now, but what about um, grease from just home use? Does that continue to be a problem or 
Well, one aspect of the Greece Control Program, which I really didn't touch on today, is uh, public awareness. And we do find in areas where we have Greece related SSOs that a lot of it is residential. Uh, we always send out notifications after Greece related SSOs. We do a query of homes uh, and businesses, and they get information and mail from us about that. Uh, we have done presentations at various organizations and uh, community type uh, uh, opportunities to talk about what we call Panda Greece. Uh, it's basically asking people to. Uh, scrape that grease and, and put it in the bag <coughs> rather than to put it down the drain. It benefits them and it benefits us. Uh, that is something that's ongoing um, and we usually highlight that uh, especially in November and, and uh, Christmas time when there's a lot of holiday uh, cooking going on. Out of those uh, in your graph there, out of those 21 in 2011, um, would you be able to say how many of those were more home related than residential related than um, home? Um, well, yes, I can. I can say that it's probably in the query that we do, 80 to 90 percent, uh, maybe even more sometimes. But one of the unfortunate things about Greece, and this is why wet weather impacts it, is it collects in the system a little bit over time. It finds a root crack it stays there when you have significant wet weather or even any kind of rain it moves uh, it'll break off it moves and it moves till it collects where other grease goes down and collects and creates a bottleneck so even though we do that query and I think it's important for us to use it in a way to make the public more aware of grease related problems it's hard to always determine whether that grease for that SSO came from a residential or commercial use because it comes into our system a little at a time and it builds up and it travels. It travels with rain. Um, could, could I ask you if, if, we, if we approve this today, is it generally going to be easier for a restaurant owner or harder to operate? And is it going to be less expensive or more? It is not going to be any different <coughs> Uh, today, uh, than it uh, after passage than it would have been before in terms of cost or their operations. The requirements don't change. We have already started on our certification program, which was a change, which uh, was approved back in res Resolution 1241. Uh, we have already asked customers to start installing equipment per the requirements of our current program. What I think is different is that we are at a point in time like any other piece of equipment where it wears out. Um, a small internal trap that's eight to 10 years old that's seen grease that long is gonna have to be replaced. And so it's not, we haven't really changed the rules. Those grandfathered situations, if you, um, uh, for lack of a better word, are gonna have to come up to speed with the current requirements and that's going to happen a little over time. Um, and let me add to that, um, Commissioner. The real change to our customers happened in 2004 when we had the consent decree and the consent decree required us to develop a grease control program and that's when the rigidity and inspections and, and the requirements became more significant. The uh, customers over time who were already there and established were grandfathered, but over time, they have to come into compliance when their equipment breaks or malfunctions. But the other component of this, frankly, is it's come to our attention. You, you know we had a, a person come to our meeting that there was some confusion, lack of clarity over what we have in our regulations. So that's primarily what the change is here. We took our customers' compliance at heart. And he said, I'll do what I gotta do. I just don't understand what you've got on your website. So the, the main advantage to this, I think, is it's more clear to a new customer what the requirements are. So that we're not mixing apples and oranges. So, um, But the truth is, I don't think the existing customers will see a, a significant impact in the change. 